In 1995, Fox would show what many claimed to be the autopsy of an actual extraterrestrial. Recovered from the wreckage in Roswell, New Mexico back in 1947, the special alien autopsy fact or fiction set out to ask the question, is what we are seeing the autopsy of an actual alien or is it all just an elaborate hoax? This special came at the perfect time for Fox as The X-Files, well into its third season, was proving to be a smash hit. The general public was at a fever pitch for shows about government conspiracies and cover-ups, so a documentary that may show an actual alien autopsy was a no-brainer. The footage came from a man named Ray Santilli along with fellow producer Gary Shufield. Ray Santilli is a musician and film producer, and in 1992, while looking for some rare home footage of Elvis, the two men were contacted by a man, a former U.S. Army cameraman, who claimed he had footage from the 1947 Roswell incident. The footage reportedly showed the autopsies of several alien beings, along with debris recovered from the crash. Santilli claims he wanted to get this footage out to the networks so they can investigate it and maybe prove its authenticity. But could the likely monetary gain be the real reason he was so keen to get it out in the public? Fox met with Santilli about acquiring the footage and paid somewhere between $150,000 to $250,000 for it. However, in order to cover their butts in case the footage was proved to be a fake, they decided to add the fact or fiction onto the title so they wouldn't get called out for lying to the public. Director John Jobson was brought on to film some of the segments for the documentary, but upon meeting with Santilli for the first time, he knew something wasn't quite right. Jobson would report back to Fox, telling them he felt the footage was faked. However, according to Jobson, Fox executives let it be known that if the public were to find out it was a hoax before it aired, it would really hurt their ratings. The special Alien Autopsy Fact or Fiction would debut on August 28, 1995 and would be hosted by Jonathan Frakes, best known for playing Lieutenant Riker in Star Trek The Next Generation and hosting a similarly themed show about the paranormal called Beyond Belief Fact or Fiction. How much money would it take to make you spend a night in a cemetery? The special would offer up the opinions of various professionals and family members of eyewitnesses to the Roswell crash as they discuss whether or not they believe the footage to be real, but ultimately leaving it up to the viewer to decide. One of the biggest contentions about the authenticity of the film is the identity of the cameraman, who Santilli simply refused to give up, citing the man was in his 80s and just wanted to be left alone. Unhappy with this, Jobson hired well-known private investigator William Deere, but fearing he may prove the tape to be a hoax prior to the air date, Fox executives only allowed him to investigate the mysterious cameraman and nothing more. The roughly 17 minute long autopsy footage is only shown in bits and pieces throughout the documentary, with two doctors performing the autopsy on the alien and a third hidden behind glass. Family members of eyewitnesses, but not the eyewitnesses themselves, give account of what they were told, how the aliens looked, what happened during the autopsy, but eyewitness testimony is spotty at best and even worse when interpreted through someone else. The film was then taken to Kodak to help authenticate it, and according to Lawrence Kate, a sales rep at the time, the tape could have been manufactured in 1927, 1947, or 1967, which could put it in line with the Roswell incident. Forensic pathologists were also brought in to give their professional opinions on the authenticity of the footage, and beyond the abnormalities of the alien having six fingers and six toes, they felt the way in which the autopsy was conducted would fit in line with the way things would have been done back in 1947. However, the death of the alien was brought into question. If it died in a crash, the injuries would likely be more extensive than what is seen. The alien only really seems to have a burn on its right leg from either fire or radiation, but the rest of it is almost completely unharmed. Special effects legend Stan Winston, the man behind films like Jurassic Park, was brought in to give his thoughts on if he thought this could be faked. This entire section of the documentary clearly showed that Stan and his team were impressed by what they were seeing, however it's a bit misleading. The main issue is Stan was led to believe the footage was from 1947, and if that were the case, then the effects work would be very impressive given the time period. However, the question of if the footage could have been faked in the 1990s is never even mentioned, which would have been a lot easier to pull off given the improvements in special effects at the time. So while it may seem like this is a slam dunk from a legend confirming that he believes it's real, the whole thing is very manipulated. Years later Stan Winston would chime in saying his comments were taken out of context and he felt the entire thing was a hoax from the very beginning. My initial reaction when I first saw the piece was that it was 
not real. The documentary was very earnest in its approach. I think the people involved were all genuine in what they said and believed what they said, although the private investigator stuff comes off as a little phony at the end. The special was a smash hit for Fox and was watched by roughly 7.6 million homes. It was re-aired twice and each re-airing drew an even larger audience. Shortly after the release, skeptics began to question the authenticity. In 1997, Santilli posted photos online of what he claimed were the film canisters which had written on them Department of Defense. However, they should have read National Military Establishment as the Department of Defense hadn't been fully established at that time. In 2006, the entire thing would fall apart when journalist Iman Holmes would expose it all as a hoax with his documentary Iman Investigates Alien Autopsy. The footage had all been a hoax from the beginning, however Santilli and Shufield still weren't calling it a fake. The two men claimed the footage they shot was a restoration of the original footage they had purchased in 1992. The original footage was too damaged from the heat and humidity when it sat in the army photographer's home in Florida, so it was nearly unusable. They recreated the alien autopsy with the few frames they still had left, however they won't call it a recreation. To Santilli, it's a restoration. Like if someone were to restore the Mona Lisa. I didn't fake alien footage. I didn't suggest you did, no, Mr. Santilli. we restored it. Now that we know it's a fake, sorry, restoration, how did they do it? The film was shot in a London flat with friends playing the roles of the doctors. Special effects artist John Humphreys, who worked on things like Max Headroom and Doctor Who, was brought aboard to sculpt and create the fake alien. The internal organs were all purchased from a nearby butcher and included a sheep's brain, chicken entrails, and a knuckle joint to serve as the wounded leg of the alien. It took three weeks to complete and they actually had to build two aliens as their first attempt at creating the footage was a complete failure. Once filming completed, the bodies were cut into smaller pieces and according to Santilli, spread across London, which would be pretty traumatizing if you just happened to come across a leg or an arm. Although John Humphreys claims the parts were burned. The debris recovered from the Roswell crash were also recreated by John from stills of the original footage provided by Santilli and Shufield. However, Santilli did admit that they took some creative license with some of the designs. A year after the film came out, Santilli had a sit-down interview with the supposed cameraman from 1947. But it was later revealed that Santilli had just found a homeless man on the streets of LA and conducted a fake interview with him in a motel. I am the person who shot the film. I will not tell you my name. The real cameraman was a man by the name of Spiros Malaris. Malaris claims he was contacted by Santilli to direct a documentary about footage he obtained of a real alien autopsy. Although Malaris' story seems to flip-flop because sometimes he says he never saw the original alien footage and other times he says he did. Although he does sort of regret what he did because he thinks he may have hurt those within the UFO community who are excited at the prospect of some actual hard evidence. With everything out in the open, Santilli and Shufield still claim some of the original 1947 footage can be found within the recreated footage, but it's usually nothing more than some bright flashes that really show nothing. Things really start to make sense when in 2006, shortly after the Iman Investigates documentary came out, a film based on Santilli and Shufield's creation of the fake footage was released called, you guessed it, Alien Autopsy. Santilli and Shufield were producers on the film, although it barely managed to make half of its budget back at the box office, so they likely didn't get the payday that they were hoping for. In May 2021, Santilli put a frame of the original, real 1947 autopsy footage up for auction as an NFT, with a starting bid of $1 million, and the winner even getting the actual frame itself when they won. However, the site experienced a DDoS attack during the closing moments of the auction, and as far as I can tell, it never actually sold. People were split on the validity of the video, but it quickly became the butt of many jokes. It was briefly mentioned in an episode of Seinfeld. So what do you think of that avian autopsy? Oh, that's real. I think so too. <laughs> and even Fox's very own X-Files took a couple jabs at it, including the episode Jose Chung's From Outer Space, where Dana Scully performs an autopsy on a fake alien in largely the same manner. The alien autopsy special was an interesting footnote in 90s pop culture. It started as real, then a hoax, then a film about a hoax, and now it's largely forgotten. Is there footage of an actual alien autopsy floating around out there that just happened to inspire this recreation? Or was the whole thing made up so the men behind it could make some cash? 
Anyways, that's all for today. If you're itching for some more alien goodness, well, I have a video about a filmmaker who made a found footage alien film so convincing that people thought it was an actual alien abduction. And you can find that video right here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're doing well, and I'll see you in the next video. Shipping. Mulder, this is even hokier than the one they aired on the Fox Network. You can't even see what they're operating on.